Hello again folks. We're going to go through some of Roger's beer can collection here. This is all featuring 12 ounce US cone top beer cans. Most of these are what they would call high profile cans and brewers when the can first came out in the 1930s were a little skeptical about the idea. Big brewers like Pabst and Hams went all in and bought dedicated canning lines for their breweries because they believed this was the wave of the future but smaller brewers like Renner in Youngstown, Ohio bought these cone top cans because they could fill them through their existing bottling lines with a bottle cap on top and not make a lot of modifications and not incur a lot of cost but could use cans. The disadvantage of the cone top cans was storage in uh, coolers or on shelves this additional cone on top stacking problems and such unless you put them in a six pack but the flat top cans were definitely uh, a lot easier to pack and carry and such and in these videos what we're doing is going through estimated value of $25 in a can condition of two minus these were all Rogers assessments on his cans and rather than throw away all his hard work with these papers and documentation I thought I would go through and give you comments on all of these different cone top cans and if you find that interesting and you're watching this all right I do too so this Renner I don't know if this has been repainted, but down here it looks a little fishy. But that's eh, a medium tough can at $150, probably a fair value at $20 to $30. Our next can, again from the Renner Brewing Company in Youngstown, Ohio, a metallic can. Remember how I talked earlier about humidity spotting? This is in the body or paint of a metallic can, and it can't be fixed or altered or anything. Once it's in there, it's in there. It's not rust, but uh, it's just discoloration to the paint. And very often, metallic cans are hard to find in great condition. He puts this one at 65 bucks. That may be a little heavy, probably 40 or so. Rhinelander. And can conditions, I told you earlier, in the can collecting world are from one to five. They put this at a five, and a collector would just want an example in his collection. So. You put a grade 5 on your shelf, maybe years later you go to a can show and you see a better grade, you'd upgrade it, but at least you'd have a placeholder on your shelf. 20 bucks, yeah, that's that's a little steep. Maybe 5 to $10, unless that's a super hard variation, but you can barely read the label on this one, and uh, that is not a great condition can, but still, a placeholder. We go back to Renner in Youngstown, Ohio. $125, that looks like a pretty steep valuation. Look at all the heavy rust on the bottom rim. Looks like a dent there. Those can be taken out. And you might be able to minimize the uh, rust through soaking in citric or oxalic acid. If you want more details on that, go to therustybunch.com and it's detailed on how to clean or improve the condition of your cans. Reich Brewing Company in Springfield, Illinois. This is a metallic can that looks to be in pretty darn good shape. And he puts it at a full book value of $70. That may or may not be right. Oh, you would have thought I'd have been better prepared. Regal from Duluth with Sir Duluth pictured in the little shield there. 35 bucks. Yeah, that's probably fair. You can tell there wasn't any dusting going on there, but... Thank you, Roger, for detailing all these cone tops. Again, to Youngstown, Ohio. Look at all the different cans Renner had. With the cap, sometimes that adds a little premium. Sometimes the cap can be worth more than the can. This Rhinelander, this is the black version. I believe it's the Export. Uh, 65 bucks is really a little outrageous on that one. That one's been spray painted on the cone with a little silver spray paint. There could be touch up in here. I'm just going by these pictures. Ryan Lander, Rocky Mountain, out of Anaconda, Montana. That's not a real tough can. They must have made a bunch of them. Rolling Rock from the Glass Line Tanks of Latrobe, Pennsylvania. That is a fairly tough can to find in the cone top. Even the flat top version. Uh, $50, that may be a little steep. That might be $35 to $50 in that shape. From Duluth. And there are a lot of different variations of these. Collectors will look down here. Some of the uh, variation collectors want to get a 3-2, a 5% alcohol. This one is the strong version. $50. Yeah, overpriced. 
Royal Pilsner, this is what they call a J-spout top, that unusual high-rise top. $50 with that fade. So this side of the can, probably in a dump, was down in the dirt. And this side was facing the sun and got that unusual yellow coloring. Yeah, a grade four. $50, it's a bit much. Now look at this one. Crusty rust and barnacles. Probably a $20 can. But see down here, not more than 3.2% alcohol by weight. Here's another one, 3.2%, contains not more than 3.2%, so that's a variation. Look at that, grade 5 minus, he grades it at a, a buck, that's probably spot on. That's called a low profile inverted rib cone top, and that was one of the first cone tops made. It would have a flat bottom and inverted little ribs in the top. This was made by Schlitz. Shells in New Ulm, Minnesota, the second oldest family brewery in America. That's a fairly tough metallic can, and this is the strong version. Valued at 85, that's that's a bit much. Schlitz in a metallic high-profile version, $35. That, that's probably spot on for that can. It looks to be in good condition. Schmitz with the smiling guy from Logansport, Indiana. He has that just below book value. That could be right, but look at you've got... Could it have been relitted? You know, if you're going to pay that much money for the can, see how the wording has been obscured by the top cone? But yet the cone, you know, you try to check for matching wear on the top and bottom, and that looks to be in pretty darn good condition. Flip this page over, and what do we have here? Schmitz. No sugar, no glucose added. Well, why would you add that to beer? $125, and here you can see some of that spotting there on the label. Not perfect, but... For a 60 or 70 year old can, that's in pretty good shape. Here's another Schlitz with a vitamin D on the side. It's got some paint loss here. I'd probably put that about $40. Here's another J Spout. See that high rise on the top? It's just a different cone top variation. Certain cans in certain eras were made that way. $90, you know, with a book value of $225. Book value is for a darn nice can. And this one is not that nice, so there he put it at 90. It may be a bit stiff on that. Let's flip this one over. How about the other one, too? We're in the S's here. Schmitz from Philadelphia. And this was a near beer from Minnesota with the cap. Full yet, too. One of the dangers of leaving cans full is a lot of times they'll leak through the weakest point, which is a seam. So you can have a can for 20 years on the shelf, and all of a sudden you'll notice, ooh, discoloration on the wall. What you should do with cone tops, if you want to empty them out, place a quarter on the cap, then use a can opener to gently pry it off. That way you don't damage the can. What I usually do is rinse them out, let them dry, and then you can reseal the cap on top for display purposes. But this was uh, a near beer or cereal beverage. Why they even bothered to can it, I don't know. It wasn't beer. There's another J Spout, and this is probably a variation with wording or alcohol. Here's Schmidt City Club. This was an actual beer. They started this Target logo in 1951. And uh, this, see, not more than 3.2%. 3 Here's the metallic version of that, again with the Target logo. And look at the difference in thickness of the logo, too. We've got on the right a little thinner City Club logo. And this is a metallic can. This one's much harder to find in good condition. Again, because of the metallic humidity spotting, it's a condition sensitive can. Someone has taken and polished the cone top on this. That reduces the value if you run it under a sander and it's polished to that artificial sheen. They've got this one at 50 bucks. That's probably about right. Here's another one. See down here it says strong beer. So that's a variation. Not a big difference in difficulty, just a different variation. Silver Fox. One of, uh, I was going to say Oklahoma, but that would have been wrong. This is a pretty tough can. 325 in the book, that would have to be a pretty close to mint can. 40 bucks. Yeah, I don't know if you need it. Here's a low profile cone top. Looks like this has been repainted with silver at 80 bucks. I don't think it's that tough. That's from Reno, Nevada. Another Sierra, heavily repainted on the bottom and top. And back in the day, this was an accepted practice, but collectors today kind of frown on doing that just because it stands out so much and looks fakey to me let's flip this one over another sierra probably 
you know, some different variation in this one. Stag, this is a super common cone top from Belleville, Illinois. Yeah, you can get those for 25 bucks sometime. Stonies from Smithton, Pennsylvania. That looks like a can that would meet book value. That looks in amazing shape. With cap, good condition, no flaws in the paint, no rust, humidity spotting. A great can. Standard, here's another J spout. See that odd top? Standard sparkling ale. Rusty, 35 bucks. That's probably on. Here's a stag again. This one probably has internal revenue tax paid. Again, a variation. 20 bucks, that's probably fair. Tacoma, comments, repainted. Yep, you can see the repainting in there. But, pretty solid cap and everything. A good placeholder in your collection. Sunshine on a cloudy day. From Reading, Pennsylvania. Light Supreme from South Bethlehem Brewing Company in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. That's a tough can, but you can see it's probably been repainted. The letters look uneven. Somebody went at that one and tried to make it better shape. Star Banner Ale. There were a huge find of these back in the day. I don't know if that's a proper value or not, but as you can see, cans on the high end that were pretty rare, they value them in a thousand plus in the book. That's because they don't know what some fool might pay for them. Schmitz from Philadelphia. That's a pretty common can. Looks in pretty decent shape. I'd put that one at maybe 40 to 50. Not quite that high. Royal Brew. A tough can at $500. 20 bucks. Sure. That works for a placeholder. Red Top from Cincinnati, Ohio. That's a cool can. Graphics. Let's flip this page over. Red Wing. This is a Minnesota toughie. As you can see, it would say down here premium in red and red in the headdress, red in the wings. Just a tough can because it was made for such a short time and anytime cans have graphics like that on it uh, they seem to command a little bit of a premium but this is a can even in dumper condition would have real good value and as you can see he puts it at a hundred bucks I can see a Minnesota guy paying that probably happily for that example of a can I think it was only made for a year or two and I don't know if it was actually made by the Red Wing Brewing Company they changed hands a few times uh, well, of course, it was made by them, but that is a tough Minnesota can in any shape. If it has red, even better. Red Fox Ale, that is a low-profile cone top, $40. I'd say that's spot on. Red Top, again, another version from Cincinnati, Ohio. That would probably be $40, bucks. a little stiff at $60 for value. Rainier, that looks in great shape. You know what? That's probably a $60 can. San Francisco, they also made it. Up in Washington. Here's a couple more Rainiers. This one, Special Export with the Mountains, and this one, Rainier Club. Both of these are cans that you can find with a little patience in fairly decent condition. They are available. Let's flip this one over. A couple more Rainiers. But see, this one has had the top taken off, or maybe was never lidded. It's got a flared edge. There are a specialist or two that could relid that for you if you wanted to uh, have that done so you'd have a solid can, but you have to find what's called a donor top, a similar can, maybe from a more common brand, with matching wear, and they can apply that lid for you. It's probably uh, 25 to 40 or 50 dollars to get that done, but if you have a tough can without a top or the top's toasted, that's a good option. Here's a couple more Rainiers, and these may be alcohol variation. Yep, comments, natural, not more than 4%. Here's another Rainier, that's in great shape. I'd say that's worth all of $55. A Prima, this was a paint over. Back in the day, sometimes housewives or gals would paint over beer cone tops and put a sprinkler top on them to be used for ironing. You could uh, sprinkle water on your clothes and uh, they would repurpose these cans, and they're called paint overs, and some guys have the patience to take rubbing compound and take that paint off. That looks like what happened here. 25 might be a stretch on that. That's a fairly tough can. Potosi, bad over paint or silver paint on the cone and the bottom rim. 35 bucks, yeah, that's a bit stiff. That'd probably be a $20 can. Are you bored yet? Pickwick Ale on the left. That's a tough can. At 100 bucks, I would say that's right. And this Prima beer, if it hasn't been repainted, sometimes people with that solid background will attempt to repaint. That's a bit stiff valuation at $175 for that can, I feel. Sorry about that. 
Let's turn this over. We have a Peels low profile cone top. That's tough. Peerless from the cross. That's a fairly common can. Whether or not they made them in huge quantities, but they are available. All right. We've got Pickwick on the right from Half and Refer in Boston. And the Rainier from California. That's a tough can, but at $50, that's a grade four minus. Yep, that's probably right on. Pacific Lager on the left at $100, that's a bit much. And 35 is <clears throat> pretty steep in valuation for the Peerless. That's the enamel version. The previous Peerless I showed you was the metallic version. All right, digging down further. Ortliebs and Pacific. We're going to zip through a few of these kind of fast. Old Virginia. Nice condition can. That might be worth $85. Ortliebs on the left out of Philadelphia and Rochester, New York. This is a pretty common can, and that's worth every bit of $35. Old Style from La Crosse, Wisconsin. There are a lot of alcohol variations on that. Contains not more than 3.2%, and the Old Vat is a tough can from Ohio. Here's another old style variation with the cap. This can is in beautiful condition. He grades it a grade one. That's what book value comes out at, but look at this. You've got good metallic in the top, no visible defects, maybe a little rub there, but the paint looks sharp, Vibrant, vivid, a solid example. That's what every cone top collector would strive to uh, get a can in that condition. That's a grade one, and that's what the book puts the value at. You can buy this book from the United, uh, the Beer Can Collectors of America. I believe it was printed in the early 2000s. Definitely a labor of love from many different collectors and. Uh, it went all over the country photographing collections and variations, and that's kind of the standard of the beer can hobby. Here we go with a couple more, a couple old style lagers. $45, that might be right on. $25 at that, looks a little funky and a little rusty. Uh, probably a $20 can all day. Here we go. Another old style variation. There's many different alcohol variations on that. There's an old German from Cumberland, Maryland. It's pretty rough shape. Here's an old Redding with gusts on there. It looks like there's something going on here. And that looks like it's been touched up. This one is pretty rusty. $5. Yep. Seems like cone tops in basic shape like that. Always worth 5 to 10 bucks. it seems. Here's a couple more old Germans. That may have been repainted on top. See, here's a different can. Many different variations here, and some of them can be worth a big difference in value. Some of them, it just doesn't matter, only to the collector. Now, here's another grade one. They call this one plus, so this must be a beautiful can. It values it over book value by $20, but if you just get a stunning example that's just come out of a wall after remodeling or something, it may be above book, book value. Here's an old export. There were a ton of these found, I think, in the 80s. Again, he has that one. He maybe got them from the same find. 65 over the book value of $50. This one he has full book value, too. Old German. And old export from Cumberland, Maryland. Metallic can. You can see it has some problems here and there. Old Bohemian, a grade 5 at 10 bucks. That's probably right. All right, we're going to wind up with these last five. Old Dutch brand ale. That's a very tough can. A thousand plus, hundred and fifty, yeah, maybe. All it takes is that one collector that needs this example or an upgrade. They might pay that for it. An Orals from Louisville, Kentucky, at fifty dollars. Book value at eighty-five. I think that's a bit steep. Old Anchor. That is a tough J spout. A thousand dollar plus valued can has it at one hundred and fifty. This is what they would call a dumper can, maybe out of a resort or a fishing camp or a civilian conservation camp dump where they dump these and collectors go out with metal detectors and still find them in the ground and yes they do have some pretty good value especially if they're rare cans like this one and we finish up with a northern from superior wisconsin there's a couple different northern variations this is the most colorful i really like this label it's a metallic can if you find it in good shape uh, 
book value 175 this one at 75 yeah it's probably 40 to 50 dollars all right and while we close out see there's the other northern can this one's a lot easier to find and not nearly as colorful so i'll show you these two is from superior right across the bridge from duluth minnesota little northern brewing company and that ends our cone top round three i hope you've learned a little bit on this and condition and grading and value i'm barry from ibuyoldbeer.com thanks for watching